Welcome. Welcome. Welcome, welcome to Church Online. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to Church Online. Welcome. Welcome to Online Church. Welcome to Church Online. Welcome to Church Online. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to Online Church. Welcome to Church Online. Welcome. 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 Welcome to Church Online. Welcome to Church Online. Welcome to Church Online. And welcome to Church Online. Welcome. Welcome to Church Online. Welcome. Welcome, eh? To Church Online, eh? Welcome. Welcome all the mouth. Welcome to Church Online. Welcome, Welcome to, to Church, Church Online. Online. Woo! Just one word, you calm the storm that's around. Just one word, the darkness has to retreat. Just one touch, I feel the presence of heaven. Just one touch, my eyes were open to see. My heart can't help but believe. There's nothing that our God can't do. There's not a mountain that He can't move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can't do. Just one word, you knew what's broken inside me. Just one word, and you revive every dream. Just one touch, I feel the power. One touch, my eyes were open to see. My heart can't help but believe. There's nothing that a God can do. There's not a mountain that He can move. Or oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that a God can do. There's nothing that a God can do. There's not a prison wall He can break through. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can do.
till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. All right, Tim and Mel here. We are at the location for log party day. We have not been here yet. Uh, we just got out of the car. Rach sent us the address. <laughs> the camera is cutting Mel out. Um, <laughs> we're gonna find out where we're doing log party day. Um, seems like it's a random building. It's kind of hard to suss out from Google Maps. What are you thinking, Mel? <laughs> so excited to see what this looks like. Um, I think last year's location was amazing. So I don't know if Rach can top it, but yeah. All right. <laughs> This, uh, this camera just really wants to send to me right now. <laughs> so, yeah. Look, I think, I think we're here. This is, uh, wow. Guys, check this out. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, this is, this is amazing. <laughs> We're going to receive our offering now. If you're someone who already gives online, thank you so much for supporting the gospel work here at Northern Life. If you'd like to give and you're not sure how, there's a button that says give. Click that and follow the prompts. everyone, my name is Anonymous Musician Narrator and today I'm going to be telling you the story of Joshua and the battle at Jericho. You see, the Israelites are so close to the promised land, but there's something more like some people standing in their way. You see, the people guarding the wall at Jericho are like, no way, you shall not pass. So God sent an angel to go speak to Joshua. Are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, but as the commander of the Lord's armies, I have now come. What message does my Lord have for his servant? Take off your sandals. For the place where you are standing is holy ground. Ring a bell? Moses had a similar encounter with God, but now God would send Joshua and his army to defeat Jericho. Go! 
God told me to walk once around the city every day for six days. Seven priests would be carrying trumpets made out of ram's horn and they'd march in front of the Ark of the Covenant. Sidebar, the Ark of the Covenant is a sacred object that represents God's presence with the Israelites. Be strong and courageous. Today, the Lord will give you Jericho. That's so cool. Shall we keep walking? Yeah. God told us that on the seventh day, we were to march around the city seven times with the priests blowing on their trumpets. After the final lap, they'll blast a long sound and the whole army will give a loud shout and then the walls will collapse and we'll be able to go in. Shall we try it? Yeah, sure. Are you ready? Yeah, I'll play a fake trumpet sound on my flute. Joshua led the Israelites into the promised land. What happens next? Is it happily ever after? What lessons will God's people learn? Find out next time. Thanks, Josh. That was amazing. Thanks, anonymous musician narrator. I had a great time. Wow, what an exciting event we just watched. Have you noticed that God sometimes asked us to do things that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense? Walk around the city walls, give a loud shout and play the trumpet. God has interesting ways of doing things and all he asks of us is to obey and trust in him. Let's pray. Dear Lord, you are our refuge and our strength and ever present help in trouble. Remind us Lord over and over to live by this truth. As we come before you in these uncertain times, we look to you for understanding, wisdom and guidance. Help us to take the time to be informed about the virus and its spread so that we can act responsibly. Give us wisdom to make good decisions about our actions and interactions with others. Guide us through the darkness and be our light so that we also can be a light to the world. Lord, we pray for our leaders, world leaders and our own federal and state leaders here in Australia. We pray that they are able to balance the health and economic needs of their jurisdictions in ways that are just, compassionate and viable. Give wisdom where there is ignorance, compassion where there is disregard, love where there is fear, respect where there is disdain and hope where there is despair. We pray for those who are at the front line of this pandemic. Protect them and bless them and let them know you as Lord of the universe so they might work with your authority. We pray for those working on a vaccine. Provide wisdom, opportunity and supernatural breakthroughs. Lord, you are our Alpha and our Omega, our beginning and our end. Make fresh to us this revelation. Enable us to sit within this embrace you have of us, that you are our all and nothing exists meaningfully except within this embrace. Lord Jesus, as we think about our relationship with you, especially in these times, we ask for your Holy Spirit to draw us close to you. Help us to find healthy rhythms of grace that continue to challenge and transform us to your image. Help us to hear your promptings to let go of what is unhealthy and to turn to you afresh for deep revelation and breakthrough. Prompt us to look to your word and to spend time in prayer with you so that we know you more and hear your voice in the small and the big moments of our lives. We pray that even though the church is physically scattered, that we might come together in all the opportunities that there are in church online, life hubs, prayer meetings, watch parties and more, together as one body that is united and growing as we, as we face down this latest challenge. We pray that those you have brought to us in these last few months, either through our physical gatherings or through church online, will continue to connect and grow with us as we journey through this strange season. Connect them with brothers and sisters here for our mutual benefit and growth. Create spaces for them to feel and enjoy life with a community of, of believers. Lord, we pray for our church leaders. 
We thank you for Jonathan's leadership of the diaconate and for their willingness to evaluate issues and then listen for your will in matters of your church here at Northern Life and in this decision especially about the virus and physical gatherings. We thank you for the unity of this body, that each of them acts with the best, best interests of our church in mind. Father, we ask for your blessing on the pastors as we work on creating more opportunities for connection for our church family and for opportunities to reach into the wider community of Hornsby. Give us wisdom and insight to meet our collective need to worship and to learn and to have fun and fellowship in new and innovative ways that stretch and invigorate us all. Bless what you prompt and bring the people together. Let this be a time where we find joy and celebration of who you are and what you do when we dare to believe. Father, we pray for our young people. Uphold those with faith and make them stronger. For those who are wavering, give them revelation. And for those who are questioning, give them witnesses who are strong. We pray for our leaders and for Rachel as she encourages and leads those youth in our church. Father, we pray for those who are suffering. Bring them peace. Let us be your instruments of comfort. Let us look at suffering and act rather than look away and forget. Give us a spirit of courage, sensitivity and generosity to meet the needs of those you put in our paths. Father, we bring all these prayers to you in the name of our Saviour, your beloved Son, Jesus. Amen. Psalm 125 Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken but endures forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, both now and forevermore. The scepter of the wicked will not remain over the land allotted to the righteous, for then the righteous might use their hands to do evil. Lord, do good to those who are good, to those who are upright in heart. But those who turn to crooked ways, the Lord will banish with the evildoers. Peace be on Israel. A few weeks ago, I was walking around some tracks at the top of the cliffs at Warunga. And it reminded me of being nearby there some 35 years ago, learning to abseil off the 30 metre drops. I was part of an organisation called Boys Brigade, and in their wisdom, they had decided that to get your adventure badge, you needed to not only rappel off the cliff with a normal abseiling device, a figure of eight carabiner style thing. No, that wasn't enough. You had to do what's called a classic abseil. The classic abseil looks like this. Nothing but the rope and your body. In fact, quite painfully, your backside and outer thigh and a bit of your back basically creates the friction required to stop you plummeting to your death. Not a very safe thing to do on a Saturday afternoon as a teenager. There was no safety device. There was no backup. A little like jumping off a much bigger cliff in Norway with nothing but a kite suit. Something I, I have not done and I don't intend to do. There's no safety device, or maybe parkour, the sport of jumping from one building to another and hoping you don't have a bad day. No safety device. Is that what the discipleship journey is like? After last week in Psalm 124, and all the talk about the perils of the journey, the hazards lurking behind every corner, you may be tempted to think that following Jesus, walking the discipleship journey, is a lot like a tightrope walker with no net. Fun while it lasts, but pretty horrible if you mess up. Psalm 125 is the counterbalance. If you're with God, you're secure. The metaphor is, is not a tightrope walker. It's a fortified high city surrounded by mountains. In God's hands, we are absolutely and entirely safe and secure. He is steadfast in his faithfulness. Psalm 125 tells us, Our God is enduringly strong, unswervingly fair, and undeservedly generous. And because of these truths, those who trust in him are completely secure. Completely secure. Through trial, through doubt, through death, completely secure. Those who trust in the Lord 
are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken, but endures forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people both now and forevermore. It's an uphill pilgrim journey to Jerusalem for the annual feasts, the feasts of Passover, Pentecost and Tabernacles. These are songs of ascent, songs for the discipleship journey. Those who trust endure forever. The Lord surrounds his people. Relax. Last week we had hip-hop. This week could be Bobby McFerrin singing, Don't worry, be happy, because our God is enduringly strong. The Hebrew words for forever mean permanent, perpetual, always, never-ending. Security is constant because our God is enduringly strong. Generation after generation will testify that he was enough for their greatest challenges and fiercest enemies. The people of Israel didn't have a backup plan on the journey. It was dangerous, yet everything changed for them when they remembered the God who created the heavens and the earth was their God, and they were his people. And if he was with them... They were as secure with God on the journey as they would be within the heavily fortified walls of the city of Jerusalem, fortuitously surrounded by mountains which made invasion from enemies almost impossible. Mount Zion. Mount Zion was first mentioned in 2 Samuel. It was a Canaanite hill fortress in Jerusalem captured by David. It became synonymous with the city of David, which was the city of God. The people sang about the inviolability of Zion. That is, it could never fall with God in it. Of course, later on in Israel's history, God left the city and it was no longer impenetrable. But while God remained, it was invincible or inviolable. The people would sing this song to remind each other our God is enduringly strong. With him, we are secure forever. Actually reminds me of uh, my God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. That's true. Are you born again? Have you repented of your sins and placed your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Saviour and Lord? Do you believe that he is fully God and fully human? He lived the perfect life that we could not live to die the perfect death in our place for our sin. And he victoriously rose again from the grave, defeating sin, death and the devil. If you believe this and have confessed this, the Bible says you are saved. You will be saved and you are perpetually being saved. You're immersed like a baptism in salvation, and you are safe. Amen. We need not fear that we will fall off the teetering tightrope of Christianity, that we will fall out of the precarious classic abseil rope wrapped around us, edging down the cliff of life. We are safe in the hands of Jesus, filled with his spirit. If you're a Christian today, you're God. My God is enduringly strong. He will not run out of puff, no matter how many times we let him down. No matter how many times we fail. No matter how many challenges come against us, forever and ever and ever. Stop and hear that. By grace, through faith, nothing can ultimately touch you. You are safe in Jesus, and that is forever. Eternal life is eternal. No power of contrary choice, no sin, no tear, no injustice. This is our hope in our enduringly strong God through Jesus. Yet this side of our resurrection to eternal life, this side of the grave, there is injustice aplenty. It's what the Song of Ascent deals with next. Verse 3, the scepter of the wicked will not remain over the land allotted to the righteous, for then the righteous might use their hands to do evil. Our God is unswervingly fair, even though our world is not. 
If we were to summarize what the original Hebrew says here in the text, it would be this. The fist of the wicked will never violate what is due the righteous, provoking wrongful violence. If the unjust fist of the wicked is enduring, if there is no true hope for the good and righteous in our world, then the people of God lose. And we are forced to join forces with the violent, to take up arms against our oppressors. But the psalmist says, the fist of the wicked will not violate God's ultimate plans. The world is hell-bent on hell. The world is self-imploding. No sooner does a good person take control of things in history, but power does its thing and goes and corrupts that good person and things go bad again. The psalmist is leading the people in a song to sing that will remind them that Yahweh is just and because he is strong, justice will come. We wait upon the Lord for justice to come, like the new sun rising over the hills. We are now living through another period of global unrest ignited by the deaths of black people in custody. Whatever you think about the ideological backgrounds of movements like Black Lives Matter, the bottom line is that there has been systemic oppression and structural injustice perpetrated against black people in the United States and, of course, here against our own indigenous people for hundreds of years. This is a picture that one might expect to have been taken in the last few months of um, what we've been living through, but it, it's actually dated 1922. It says on June 24, 1922, more than 3,000 black people marched in a silent protest through the streets of Washington, D.C., demanding an end to lynchings that terrorised black people. They carried signs that said, we are 15 years old. One of our age was roasted alive. Another sign said, Congress discusses constitutionality while the smoke of burning bodies darkens the heavens. The Bible says the fist of the wicked will not violate the plans of our God. We live in a world filled with injustice. Often it's hard to know what to do. Well, at least we can lament. We can do our best to walk a mile in the moccasins of those who are oppressed and remember that light wins over the darkness in the plans of God. Our God is unswervingly fair and his fairness, his justice, is demonstrated often through the works of his people as we care about what God cares about. Amen. One of the greatest songs, in my humble opinion, written in recent years, is Andrew Peterson's Is He Worthy? We had it sung as an item at our opening service. The same author of that song marched in one of the protests in America, and he wrote a song entitled A White Man's Lament. I'd like to read it out to you. It's a couple of minutes. Peterson is not suggesting in this song that to be beloved of God means everyone is saved no matter what. He's just saying that in God's eyes... Like our core value says, life matters. Every life matters. George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmoud Arbery were all black people killed through unjust violence. This is the song. A white man's lament for the death of God's beloved. I was walking down on Broadway in a multitude of marches on parade. There was anger, there was passion. There was mercy, there was peace yet to be made. And the masks that we were wearing kept the virus in control, or so they say. And there was sickness in the air, and to be fair, it was the grief and all the grievances that plagued the many years and caused the tears on every face. There are things I've done that need to be forgiven, but I'm still learning how to ask, because the virus in my veins has been contained by this inherited mask. And I'd rather be exposed to what is killing than to hide from what's to blame. So let me lift my voice on Broadway. Let me lift my brother's cross. Let me mourn for what it cost. And feel the magnitude of loss in every name. George, Brianna, 
Amun, all beloved of God. And there's more, so many more, but there's just no way to say every single name. And there's anguish, so much anguish to be sure, inside the killers of the slain. Because if you've done somebody wrong, it's like a song you can't just banish from your head. It'll eat you while you're sleeping like a wolf that you've been keeping by your bed. And those names are going to haunt you till you lie down in the grave and say goodbye. Then on the resurrection morn you'll see the form of Jesus blazing in the sky. And then you'll know how much he loved the ones who suffered, whose blood was crying from the ground. And then you'll reckon with the truth that even they and even you were so much dearer than you knew. So tell me what then will you do when the ones you never knew come back around? George, Brianna, Amwood, all beloved of God. And I shouldn't be surprised that when the lies come out of hiding, there's a fire, because when every hope was dashed into the ashes of that funeral pyre, there was a spark of truth unsmothered till the mighty wind uncovered and relit. So let us lay down on the altar every sin that we pretend we don't commit till this world has been refined. Oh, let us share the bread and wine and pass the peace till every soul has been remembered, every stony heart is tended, every all has been surrendered, every noble cause is rendered obsolete. And I believe that there's a reckoning in store, and all the poor and the oppressed will be the first who were the last, and all the lost and all the cursed will be the blessed. So let this kingdom of the least spread the table for the feast and light the flame. Let us send the invitation. Every tribe and every nation, there's no corner of creation that is safe from this salvation. It is rolling down the mountain like the water from a fountain. It is breaking on the beaches from the deep and distant reaches of the seas. And all the gleaners are the proclamation bringers and the dancers are the answers to the questions of the singers and we'll shout that we were wrong. We had it coming all along but then the mercies of the Lord will be the chords to every song and all the glories of the King will be the melodies we sing and all these marches on parade are making ready for that day. So it begins as I repent. I bow my head as I lament this broken world. Because every victim, every villain was a precious little boy or little girl. This is me and this is you. This is the truth. If you believe it or not, you have always been beloved. They have always been beloved. George, Brianna, Amud, all beloved of God. The Fist of the Wicked will never violate what is due the righteous, provoking wrongful violence. The people of God have a song to sing about the security found in our God and the confidence that gives us to stand up for what is right in this world. The people of Israel were called to do the same. The psalm finishes with, Lord Do good to those who are good, to those who are upright in heart. But those who turn to crooked ways, the Lord will banish with the evildoers. Peace be on Israel. Point number three, I would suggest, is our God is undeservedly generous. Do good to those who are good. Who is good? Who is truly good? The Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. No one is upright in heart. All have turned to crooked ways. All deserve to be banished from a holy God. No one deserves peace. Yet Isaiah the prophet prophesied in chapter 53, verse 4, probably 700 years before Jesus, Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, 
and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. We are all crooked. We are all deserving of wrath. God has poured out his wrath on the Lamb of God who has been punished in our place, Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The pilgrim people walking the ascent to Jerusalem sang, Peace be on Israel. Isaiah said, The punishment that brought us peace was on him. There can be no lasting peace in this world without the cross of Jesus. Amen. Because in the cross, Jesus put death to death. Jesus put violence to death once and for all. Jesus soaked up in himself all the deserved judgment on every unjust action, every individual sin, every sin-stained barrier to humanity, knowing their loving God. Jesus took the judgment and tore down the wall so that we, by faith, could have peace with God. And this love, this grace, this mercy, this generosity was and is undeserved. Amen. Our God is enduringly strong and he is unswervingly fair and he is undeservedly generous to us. And that makes those who trust in him safe forever. Jesus Christ fulfilled the cry of Psalm 125. Security, justice, grace. Where do you find your security? To whom do you look for justice? Where do you find the grace you need to recover from moral failure? Our help is in the name of the Lord. For some of us, it's time to give our lives to the Lord. To admit that we are a sinner and ask God for forgiveness. To believe Jesus died for me to commit to follow Jesus all the days of our lives. You can do that today. Just pray what I've just suggested. Admit, believe, commit. For others, it's time to find the peace that is available in the safe arms of the Father. To care about what the Father cares about. And to gratefully live in the powerful grace we have been saved through. Can I encourage you to spend some time in prayer in your own time and reconnect with the Lord we we are not teetering on a tightrope on this discipleship journey we're not precariously abseiling down the cliff our God is so big so strong and so mighty there is nothing our God cannot do that's true Amen scroll, the Lion of Judah, 
who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. Is he worthy? Is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy of this? He is. Does the Father truly love us? I 
It's who I am. It's who I am. 